Hello and welcome to Tinkertube's Lab. It's been quite a while since I uploaded my last video where I told you what I am going to do with my lab. Mainly rebuilding it and building a new work desk and a new video taking desk. And also I told you about this cupboard shelf equipment holder thing which I built in the last few days. As you can see it is nearly done. The main body of the equipment holder is ready. I have already fitted the fuse box and also placed some of the equipment I am going to build inside of it in the shelf just to see roughly how they fit and how much space they take. And I thought well I should at least give you some kind of update where I am standing right now, what the progress of the whole project is and what you can expect in the next few weeks. Maybe you will notice that I am wearing other clothes in some part of this video. This is mainly because I shot it in several takes while I was building my lab and um, sometimes you will see or you will hear me saying stuff like I am going to rebuild my desk lamp which is actually right now already done but I don't bother taking the whole shot again so I will leave it in the I will do this form and just show you in a little picture how I rebuilt the whole stuff. But first let me show you the table I'm going to be working on in the future. Here I have a big old massive table made out of I guess it is around 4 centimeters thick material which is really solid. I mean I I can stand onto this table, jump around on it and it is not even bending at all. And so uh, this is quite impressive I guess. Uh, I also got this cutting mat in nice bright green or if you prefer I can switch it around and it will be baby blue. Uh, I took this mat because I noticed filming on this black material as it is on my old bench is really really hard. The camera loses focus quite often and with this cutting mat I hope to come by with this problem. Behind the table I placed my soldering iron and my hot air rework station. It's quite a nice place. I can reach it from where I am tending to work at the moment without any effort at all. Um, by the way, if you didn't know what I'm using, you can see right now it's one of those El Cheapo. Has it, has it a brand? This one doesn't actually has a brand. It's a known under different names like Yihua 852D plus whatever hot air rework station thing. Works quite nice. It's quite cheap, but it's okay. By the way, I have a video of that, I don't know if it's one of the old German videos, I'm not quite sure, but I made a review of that one. If you're interested, try to take a look right here. Right beneath it, I have my trusty Vela DS701EC, which is a soldering and desoldering station that can operate either with compressed air using the Venturi principle to use uh, to, to create a vacuum to suck the soda off the board which is really nice as, as it is really silent. Um, the other way you can use it is uh, using the included pump that is built inside the machine. It works quite, quite nice but it is really loud. I, let me demonstrate it to you. You have the desoldering iron with this nice little tank inside for all the uh, desoldered solder <laughs> and a little button at the side which activates the pump and it's not a really nice sound. I have heard some quite some, some time that it sounds like donkey you are hitting in the ass so not particularly enthusiastic about that. 
and the uh, the way using it with compressed air would be just like and that's all you're going to hear so I will connect it back to my uh, compressed air system as soon as I have the compressed air system running again so now let me show you what I have done in the past days at first I have built the fuse box inside of my equipment desk thingy whatever which is just a little um, drywall fuse box holding right now four fuses one with 10 amps one with 6 amps and two 4 amp fuses just to go around with all the stuff I'm going to build inside of it the 4 amp is used right now the other ones are empty but I guess I will populate them as soon as I need them the next thing I would like to show you is the actual component device holder desk shelf thing whatever I have no idea what it is actually called but whatever you can see I built it out of 22 millimeter thick what is it called in English it's shredded wood with glue stuff and inside of it is just here's the drywall fuse box and some cable compartments in the back holding the wires and in the front I have this 19 inch rack mount um, rack mount nut holder rail uh, which I will use to just screw the face plates of the devices in front of the actual shelf you may also have noticed that there are some LED spots implemented into this those are actually old um, old G9 halogen spotlights which were actually rebuilt by my father to implement LED lighting in his old uh, flat um, the driver module for those LED spotlights were defective so I replaced them with general 230 volt uh, GU10 lightings and reused those here in my uh, component holder thing and actually it works quite nice if you take a look I switch off my uh, filming light and switch on the spotlights this was the wrong switch that is the right switch and you can see it's actually quite a decent light output this tube here will be featured in an upcoming episode I am rebuilding my fume extractor and also this nice shaded multimeter you can see here which I got from a local flea market for really really cheap money let's switch on the lights again this test field I have directly built into the whole shelving itself mainly because this is stuff I will definitely need always it contains a simple E27 light bulb holder just to quickly test light bulbs in a convenient way by for example just screwing it into there choosing the right voltage 150 volts or 230 volts and just powering it while powering this also those two sockets are powered it's one of the generic uh, European plug IC plug sockets and one of those cheap Chinese one fits all stuff thingies which are actually quite crappy but it will do the job if you want to test out some equipment with a plug you don't own in your country so this is quite a nice thing and by the way if you take a closer look at that you can see the Chinese way of printing labels onto this I don't know if you can see it the 230 volt socket only gives out 5 volts at 2.1 amps Ooh. and you can switch it off by poking your finger inside of this hole I guess or maybe they just turn the faceplate while printing I don't know it's quite hilarious
the other things I can switch with this switch panel right here is at first the actually test panels itself which are operated by two big ass relays. I have no idea how they are called in English. In Germany they are Schütze. Also I have a separate isolation transformer for my oscilloscopes which is just actually two big uh, toroidal transformers wired backwards. Uh, by the way the test field sockets are completely mains isolated so it's no problem to poke your finger inside of the E27 socket at least if you don't connect those. Um, and I can switch the lighting on and off and the uh, spotlights also. At the back side of the test bench itself I have on the left of my sitting position my two scopes the Rigel DS1054 which everyone should know and the Harmic HM50073 which is a late analog digital combi scope really really nice scope I love to use it even though I have the Rigel um, I tend to use the Harmic one when I need some quiet surrounding like when I'm working on audio equipment because the fan uh, uh, the fan mounted in the Rigol tends to be somehow annoying and the Harmic is really ultra silent you can't hear anything from it switching over to the other side we pass my do it yourself solder this roll thing whatever and one of those spongy copper shaving tip cleaners, which I really love. At the right side we have two Gossen Constanta power supplies. They are 32 volts, 2 amps. And even though they are completely analog and linear power supplies, I really love those power supplies. Um, I will feature them in a upcoming episode, I guess. They are... <laughs> you, you, really, you really see the made in Germany quality inside those beasts. Considering that I have one of those, ah, I guess well known power supply units, which you can get for around 200 euro. I, even though that has really nice features, you can couple it with the, just pressing those buttons to use it in series or in parallel. Or independent uh, and it has a fixed 5 volt 3 amp output for logic uh, like microcontroller stuff. I tend to use the Gossen quite more often even though they only, only have analog readout and the left one is lacking his uh, voltage meter as it is broken. I have no idea how that happened. Uh, I got it already with a broken uh, voltmeter, but well, I love those things and as I said in an upcoming episode I will tell you my reasons for using those. A few words to the light fixture I just mentioned. As you can see it is, or maybe you cannot see it, it's possibly way too bright. It's an Aquamedic uh, aquarium lamp. Um, as my father died, this lamp was you were hanging over his aquarium, his one and only thing in his life. But I didn't have the skill required to keep the the animals alive, so I had to get rid of it. And this lamp is what remains actually of this hobby of my father. And I decided to give it a new life in my workshop and use it as a work light. But you may have noticed it, the light it is outputting is really blue. This is because the tubes that, is, uh, that are used inside are AquaScience 39 Watt Blue. I already ordered some new tubes in neutral, in neutral white and in warm white and in cold white. So I try to combine it to get the best light output at all. But in conclusion, if I populate all six uh, light tubes inside this Aquamedic Aquarium light, 
I will get around, uh, let's calculate, 40, 80, 90, 240 watt of light output in uh, fluorescent light fixtures. And that is really a huge amount to work. As you can see right now, I guess my skin is a bit too bright as I have already also my new camera light pointing at me. You can see it right there. But I guess I can work with it. I can uh, make the whole thing switchable so that I can only use some of the lights if I want to. I guess that is a real nice light fixture that I'm going to use in the future. The next thing I would like to show to you is this uh, drawer cabinet I got basically for free from the trash. It is really huge and it is so heavy I had problems carrying it upstairs. I, I even had problems loading it into my car as this thing is it's an enormous. Uh, as you can see I have all my equipment placed inside it like my screwdrivers and my pliers. Also I have uh, I have scored quite an amount of those whiteboard markers also at the dollar store where I got those accessory coat hanger thingies. I showed you in another video uh, what I did with those. Um, it's really a nice place to go as there are some videos coming up with more stuff I found there. Right now I'm trying to get another one of those uh, drawer cabinets. They are really expensive if you try to buy them new, but maybe I get lucky again and get another one from the dumpster. Who knows? So that was basically a short overview of the changes I made in my lab, rebuilding my electronics workbench and some other parts of it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing and giving me feedback by posting a comment. I would really appreciate it. I hope to see you the next time back here in Tinkertube's lab. Until then, goodbye.